This is Seminole pumpkin. I'm going to show you how to prepare your bump pumpkins. These are Seminole pumpkins. They're easy to prepare and bake. So I'm going to show you just how easy it is. And I'm going to give you two recipes for the seeds that are inside. It's delicious. I'm going to show you a savory recipe and a sweet recipe, and that's my favorite. Hi, I'm Debbie. Welcome to my organic garden. I did grow these in my organic garden. So, the tools of the trade. Let's get started. All I have needs, I have not provided. Well, seriously, I do use a hammer with a butcher knife in order to crack them open because the skins are just so tough. And I use the hammer kind of as a safety feature for me because putting a whole lot of pressure on a knife to me is very dangerous. It's not a matter of how sharp the knife is in this um, instance. It's just, it takes some muscle to get the blade through your pumpkins. So just use a hammer instead of your, your hands. So you are going to need at least one cookie sheet. I prefer to use two, and I'll show you why. And this is a grapefruit spoon, and you'll see that that's going to come in really, really handy in just a minute. And two bowls. When my pumpkins were growing, I marked them so that I would know which pumpkins were good to save the seeds from. You see this one says no, this one's got an X on it, and this little one is, is just, there's nothing there. And that lets me know the seeds that are in this pumpkin are okay to use for next year's pumpkin vines. The reason why is when this pumpkin was growing, there were no other squash seeds anywhere in my garden or in my neighborhood that could cross pollinate with the pumpkins. So I have kept this strain of Seminole pumpkins pure for probably about, I wanna say 22 to 24 years now. I'm just really, really careful not to use seeds that could possibly have cross pollinated with any other squash. Now I did harvest these probably about five months ago now. And honestly, I've waited a little bit too long. This one has started to go soft in the middle. So I don't know what it's going to look like on the inside. I may lose part of this pumpkin. So we'll see. Let's start with this one first. I'm really curious. I just position this knife there. Okay, not too bad. I'm not going to lose very much of this. The grapefruit spoon is just a real easy way to scrape out the seeds and the fiber that's on the inside. Just keep scraping until you've got all that fiber from inside, scraped clean. And of course on this one, that's soft, it should not be soft. Look at there, see it's still got some there that needs to be cut off. Okay, I think that's pretty clean. I'm going to set that down upside down on a cookie sheet.
Okay, that one says no. I'm not going to save the seeds back on this one. So we've got that much from just two pumpkins. Now with this little one, I'm going to save back some seed for next year's pumpkins. I'm going to save those in a different bowl. And I'll just dry them. And when they're really, really good and dry, I'll store them in a Ziploc bag and put them in the freezer. And then next spring, which for me is the end of February, first part of March, I'll be planting them again in my garden. Now these little pumpkins are just typical of the Seminole pumpkins. They can be anywhere from a size of a golf a softball up to the size of a small pumpkin that you might find in the grocery store. Now I'm not going to need all of those seeds so I'm going to probably just save about half of these and I'll clean these separate from these. Now I kept my good cookie sheet to go on a bottom rack that's going to set right under the pan that has the pumpkins on it. I do not add water. I don't do anything. These pumpkins are pretty moist. They don't really need anything else. I don't need to cover them or anything. Do you see where the elements are in the bottom of my oven? The heat coming from them will be deflected off of that cookie sheet there. And that way it'll keep the pumpkins from burning so bad onto the cookie sheet that they're on. And so that's why I put an extra cookie sheet in there. You don't have to, but that is what I have found just to make it a little bit easier cleanup and also to keep the pumpkins from burning. I'm just going to empty all that in a colander that's sitting in a sink full of water. Honestly, I haven't found a real easy hack that's going to work here. I just squish them through my hands and try to loosen them up just by squishing them. And you see a lot of these seeds are floating right up to the top. And those are going to go right in here for round two. Something I want to mention here is I tried doing this without the colander. And the colander really is a big help. Get it all separated. If you just leave it floating in the sink, it just makes it more difficult. So all I'm doing here is just squishing again. Okay, I'm going to do it one more time. I've spread these out on a woven cloth. I don't want to put them on a terry towel just because I don't want the fuzz on my seeds. So they're going to dry for about a day. And I'm going to go ahead and clean the seeds that I want to save for planting next year's pumpkins. 
in the meantime, I'm still watching the pumpkins that are baking in the oven. They are done. And it just is a simple, here's some with your fork. Look how they're, they're really, really done. And I just left the little ones in there because strangely enough, they weren't getting done as quickly as I thought they would. So I just baked them all at the same rate. They're cooled off now. And I am going to blend them up in my little Ninja food processor. It's really, really easy. You just scoop out the contents and put them down in the blender. color is absolutely beautiful. Look at the color of that. Is that pretty? Oh my goodness. Now you'll see it's a little bit more liquid than what you're going to get out of the pumpkin can or a can of pumpkin. So if I would have added water to that, then it would really have been soupy. These are reusable freezer containers, or you, you could put them in the refrigerator too, or you can use them for storage. But I'm going to leave a link for these in the description below. I love them. They've been used and reused and used again. So those three pumpkins didn't even make a quart. They made like, what, a quart and a half or so here. So it takes a lot of those small pumpkins to make a significant amount of uh, end product. For some reason, my pumpkins did not do well this year. I usually have a mountain of pumpkins. I can't keep up with it. And so I end up canning and freezing the pumpkin but this year i got those three and i've got some baby ones out there in the garden again i honestly don't know what happened but you know some years are good for some veggies and other years are not so i think i'm going to use this pumpkin pretty quick I'm going to put it in the refrigerator rather than freeze it. So I will see you tomorrow when we make a delicious snack out of the pumpkin seeds. And skillet, then I would recommend that you put a very thin layer of oil on the bottom just so that they don't stick. Now I'm going to start with some soy sauce. And a little bit of water. And then the powdered garlic and onion. And just swirl that around just to mix it up a little bit. I'm going to add just a bit of salt to it. And you can kind of go by the smell. Does that smell like it would be a good combination to you? And then just pour the seeds right in there. Once the seeds are coated, you can go ahead, put them on a cookie sheet and get them in the oven. I just prefer to do this on the stovetop because I can keep better track of when they're done. They're just like the peanuts that I've uh, done a video about. They can go from not quite done to burnt real quick. And you see here, I'm getting some 
stuff along the bottom, but that's okay. This is a cast iron skillet. It can handle it. If you wanted to, you could add a little bit of oil to this. Can you see some of them are getting pretty brown? Thing is, is you'd want it to be cooked all the way through. And since that's not hard, I know it's not done. So lower the heat, keep on going. Can you see some of them moving? That's showing me there's still some moisture in there. I'm just going to keep this moving. They're almost done. Look, here's the difference in the color. See there? I've turned the heat completely off. These are pretty much done. I'm going to go ahead and remove them from the heat. But before I do, I just want to mention here, don't pile these too thick. They need to be in a good thin layer, just one layer deep. They don't need to be piled up in there. Okay, while those are cooling, I'm going to let the pan cool for a little bit and wash it out, and we'll do the sweet pumpkin seeds. The pan has been washed, seasoned again, and it's been preheating for a couple of minutes. I'm going to go ahead and add some water here, the sugar, with the spices. Give that a quick stir. You don't have to cook it down because you want to give the seeds time to cook all the way through. I'm going to keep some water handy in case I need to add some water while these are cooking down and getting brown. <clears throat> you do want them to be a bit toasty. While these are cooking, I'm going to put up a card that gives you the proportion of sugar to water. You can follow them exactly. You can vary it just a little bit, but at least it'll give you a base to go by. Now, if you want to experiment on your own, while I've been cooking, I've been thinking, you know what? might not would have been a bad idea to go ahead and toast them a little bit first before adding the sugar and the spices. I've added some water to kind of delay the burn. You got to be careful there too, because if you wait until there's a burnt layer on the bottom, you're just going to spread that flavor all over all your seeds. I can tell that the seeds weren't really, really getting done. So that's why I've added water again, give them more time to get done, and then we'll see about how we can get them to the dry point. Now, this is kind of like when you're making peanut brittle. If you've ever made peanut brittle, the first time or two, you're going to go by what it looks like. But then all of a sudden, maybe by the second or third or fourth time, you're also going by, it smells like it's done. You know, if you do a lot of baking, when those cookies are done, you say, oh, the cookies are done. And you open up the oven and sure enough, they are. It's a, a memory that you develop. And these are almost done. I'm going to spread those out so they can be more individual bites. There we go. I'm 
I'm going to put the seeds that I saved back for planting. I'm just going to leave them on the paper towel, stuff them in my envelope. It's clearly marked Seminole Pumpkin. And then I'll put the whole envelope in a Ziploc bag. And then that Ziploc bag goes inside another larger Ziploc bag because I just think that keeps it from freezer burn and stuff. So we have the savory and the sweet. They both turned out just fine. You're going to have to adjust the time that it takes according to your stove and maybe even your altitude. And, well, it's pretty basic, really. I admit it does take some time, but I like doing stuff like that. And besides, it's good. That's really good. So I did put a card up for you to see the proportion of sugar and water to make it candied. I used less sugar for this amount of seeds. So um, that's just my preference. If you like it to be really crunchy and clumpy with sugar, then use the proportions that I've given you. I'm trying, I'm trying to stay away from so much sugar. And these are still good with less sugar. Yep, that's good. That's good. They don't require refrigeration. But I have a feeling they're not going to last very long. I hope this video has inspired you to grow your own pumpkins, bake your own pumpkins, and make your own pumpkin puree, and use the seeds that are inside those pumpkins because they're not only good for you, they're delicious. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Lord unto me.